<laughs> Those were fighting words, weren't they? <laughs> you want me to grade it like, like you know, like the Tasmanian devil? Is that what? I thank you. No. No. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's settle down. Look, here's the schedule, and as far as I, I say, we just go with it because at least with this class, it's sort of like a Band-Aid, you know, right off and we're done. Look. Let's, let's sort of recap the schedule to make sure everybody's okay with this. So, we have homework nine due Friday, okay? Um, what we're going to do on Friday is have our final exam review. You all will turn in homework nine. I will give you a copy of the solution. The exam in here is scheduled for Monday, May the 1st at 10, 15 a.m. All right, so in here, Unlike steel design, it's like a band-aid, just right off, you know, just done with it. So I say we just stick with it. So what's that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, what, you get a celebration for your birthday. I, I, can't, I can't do anything about, about that one. The, the, ability, the ability to change the, the date of the differential equation exam does not fall within my boundary condition, so I can't really. <laughs> we'll keep that one to ourselves. Okay. Is everybody clear on the timeline for this class? Friday, you turn in the homework, I give you a solution. So that means no late homework is accepted for this homework. Um, I'll give you the exam review slides. You all can ask whatever you want. Because we finish our lectures today, today is our last example, and there's really nothing to cover past today, we're canceling class on Wednesday. Um, that'll give you time to work on your homework, and, and I mean, there's really nothing left to talk about, at least nothing that I'm going to put on your exam. So uh, we cancel class on Wednesday, and Friday we have our review. Everybody okay with that? One final point, uh, course evals. I've still got a pretty low turnout on course evals. Again, free points on your homework. If you haven't done it yet, please do so. I don't know about other faculty, but I really do listen to it. So if there's any um, uh, suggestions that you have or topics for improvement for future semesters, please, I, I need to know. So, and again, free points, you know. So uh, if you get that done, just send me the screenshot or show it to me and you'll get your, uh, you'll get your bonus points. Okay. <coughs> Sound good? Okay. So last time we were discussing beam columns and specifically beam column interaction. Um, maybe I'll go back to that. Okay, so what we were discussing was the usage of different interaction diagrams for the uh, use of selecting reinforcement for beam columns. And I know that there's a lot of math that goes into the, into the development of an interaction diagram, but the usage of an interaction diagram is actually pretty straightforward. So we have an interaction diagram, and, and uh, luckily everything's pretty dimensionless. In other words, we, commute, uh, we compute these dimensionless parameters on each end of the uh, axis, locate the point within the chart, and then that tells us how much reinforcement we need to place within the, the um, uh, that tells us how much reinforcement we need to place. That's basically it. In terms of naming, if you've got L467, the L stands for the fact that you've got a rectangular column with two layers of steel. L460.7. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I have no comments. All right. L460.7. The L stands for the fact that you've got a rectangular column. Uh, the 4 and the 60 stand for your material parameters. You have 4 KSI concrete, 60 KSI steel. Um, the 7 stands for that ratio of the total height of the column and the distance between your reinforcement layers. So that actually will become a big deal because 
Um, more often than not, when you compute a gamma value, it's going to be between like, like 0.6 and 0.7, so you're going to have to interpolate. So it's just something to keep in mind. <coughs> um, so for design procedures, we determine our factored loads and moments. We determine the nominal, the required nominal uh, moments and axial loads. And we just divide out by 0.65, just assuming uh, 0.65 for rectangular sections. If you've got a circular section, do a 0.75. Determine your eccentricity and your gamma. Uh, eccentricity is just uh, uh, you know the division uh, of those two quantities, and gamma is just that dimension uh, that ratio of your height to that distance between bars. Uh, dimensionless parameters, Kn and Rn, using your design charts, you calculate your reinforcement ratio. Actually, you know what? I think I, 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 think I finally hit mistake seven, because that is Mn and that is Pn. Whew. I hit mistake seven. Oh well, it'll be all right. These two are backwards. But you'll see from the units, I think it would be fairly clear anyways. The bread. We're going with seven. We're going with seven. I don't know. I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'll have to think about it. <laughs> the worst trade deal. All right. Okay. Um, in order to illustrate how to use these. Um, uh, in order to illustrate how to, how to go about a d uh, design of a beam column, I want to do the following example. And again, I think you're going to find this is pretty simple. Okay, so let, let's sort of take it uh, step by step and explain what's going on. So we have a, a beam column that is being subjected to axial loads and moments. So, so let's be clear on that. We're taking the column and we're pushing on it and we're bending it. Okay, and we're bending it. So both of those are happening at the same time. Now, let's do a little bit of mental math. The height of the column is 20 inches, right? The distance between the reinforcement is 15, right? So what would gamma be in this instance? 0.75. You take the 15 over the 20 and you'd get 0.75. There is no chart for 0.75. There's one for 0.7 and there's one for 0.8. So we would calculate the, or we would determine the 0.7 value, the 0.8 value, and then average them. So it's just something to keep in mind. <coughs> All right, sound good? Now one other pop quiz. Are we going to look up values from the L charts or the R charts? L. Why the L? There's only two layers of reinforcement. We don't have a bar here and here. So only two layers of reinforcement. Sound good? Right here. The L charts right here, if you look at the top left, where it says L4, that's two layers of reinforcement. If it has an R, that's three layers of reinforcement. So yeah. Sound good? All right. So, example 20. <coughs> Pretty straightforward, right? <coughs> now, for your dead load, or for your axial load, we have a dead load of 125 and a live load of 140. So what's our factored? What's our factored load going to be? 374, did you say?
Okay. <laughs> I like this job. All right. <laughs> All right. Let Let's discuss concrete. Okay. So what's our dead load and our live load moment? So this was 75. What was the li what was the live load moment? What's that? 90 foot kips. So therefore, our factored moment What do we got? <coughs> Say it again. 234 and that is in foot kips. So 234 and that's in foot kips. While we're at it, let's convert that to inch kips. I'm going to need inch kips here in a second. Twenty eight zero eight, is that what you said? Okay. All right. Now the first thing that we're going to compute is the required capacity. Okay? Now in order to compute the required capacity, that when I say required capacity, I'm basically meaning PN and MN. Now, in order to do that, I need a fee value. Now, this is a square column or rectangular column. So what fee value should I use, 0.65 or 0 0.75? 0 0.65. So we're going to, so I guess I'll put down here, fee equals 0 0.65. So <coughs> PN is going to be PU over fee, which is going to be 374 kips divided by 0 0.65. So what is that? So we'll just say 0 0.4, 575.4 kips. And MN is going to be MU over phi, which is 2808 inch kips divided by 0 0.65, which is what? Say it again. Of all things, a loaf of bread. Language. Language. All right. <coughs> now, in order to use the alignment charts, we're going to need a few section properties related to the column. So, uh, a couple things. Some of them are pretty simple, but we just need to be aware of what's going on. So, the first one is the area, which is pretty simple. So, the gross area. Uh, is how wide is the column? So that should be 280. All right. We need the column's eccentricity. So we have a moment and an axial load on the column. We could take that and represent it as a single load at some eccentric value. And what is the eccentricity? It's MN over PN. Now, we could have used foot kips, but we really would like an eccentricity being, to be in inches. And it'll make sense here in a second. So, 43.20 inch kips divided by 575.4 kips. What is that eccentricity? Seven point five, like one or something like that. Seven point five one. Okay. Okay. Now, <coughs> the column looks something like this, where this is twenty inches, and there's a layer of steel here and a layer of steel here, and that dimension 
is 15 inches, right? So gamma is 0 0.75. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. That's important because we're going to have to look up a, a quantity for 0.7, look up a quantity for 0.8, and then ultimately average them. I mean, technically you're linearly interpolating, but you all know the drill. Everybody okay with this? All right. Um, okay, so Kn. The first thing we're going to compute is Kn. That's going to be a property that we use on the uh, alignment chart, and it is Pn divided by Fc prime Ag. Bless you. So that is 575.4 kips divided by 4 KSI times 280 inches squared. What are the units when we're done? Exactly. These, remember, in the alignment chart, these parameters are dimensionless. That's why these, uh, these interaction diagrams, I said alignment chart, interaction diagrams are so useful is because they are dimensionless. All right. So what do, go ahead. 0.51, like, was it 0.51, like 4? Okay. <clears throat> now, Rn. What's the formula for Rn? Well, it's Pn times E divided by Fc prime AGH. Is that right? Now, watch this. I'm lazy. So, Why don't I do this? Pretty good though, right? Now what was E? Divided by See why the eccentricity needed to be in inches? Because the units had to cancel here. So now what do we get? Say it again. All right. Sound good? Okay. So, any questions so far? Any questions so far? All right. Here's what I want you all to do, all right? All right, first thing, okay, what's our concrete? What, what grade is it? 4 KSI concrete? 60 KSI steel, right? We're dealing with the L charts and not the R charts, right? We have a gamma that's 0.75, right? So this is what I want you to do. I want you to, first off, I want you to go to L4, or whoop, put the dash in the wrong place, 460.7, and I want you to tell me what row value you're getting. And we'll say to three decimal places, because you're not going to be able to get much better than that. <clears throat> Yes. Is it not in your notebook? If you've got those notes, then you have this, because it's all together. Go back to where your beam aids are.
Say what? 0.5? No, 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 no. Like, like. You should. There should be eight rings. 0 0.022. Is anybody else able to find that? Should be about 0 0.022. That's what you should be getting. Take your time. We got plenty of time. This is important. Is, it, is yours on the line? It shouldn't be on the line. It should be somewhere between the line. Well, this is point zero two. That's point zero three. Let me see your pencil. This is point zero two. That's point zero three. It's somewhere in between. Oh, okay. It's you. We're saying the same thing. It's point zero two two. I see, you have a pencil. So, so 0.193, you go up like that. Uh, 0.514, go over like that. It should put you about right there. Okay. This is 0.02, this is 0.03, so you're somewhere in between. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is everybody able to find that? This is really important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're not. So point zero nine three. You should be. Wait, 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 wait. Point one nine three is over here. Okay. You should be about right there. All right. This is point zero two. That's point zero. Oh, right here. Right here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you're re reaching over like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's about right. That's okay if it's a. Is everybody? Hey, hold on, everybody, everybody, settle down. Is everybody able to find this? Yes, sir. <laughs> Why? Okay. The L stands for the fact that you have a rectangular section with two layers of reinforcement as opposed to three. Okay. The four and the 60 are for four KSI concrete and 60 KSI steel. And the 0.7 is for a gamma of 0.7. I know. We're not done. I'm not going anywhere. Not drastically. The charts change a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yes. Software should be able to automate a lot of this, but, but in all seriousness, you really do need to be able to check that software. So often, I mean, I, it, it, more often than not, it kind of bugs somebody like me um, that just put it in the software and all whatever it says is good. And if you can't validate that, then that's a problem. Now, Mr. Schaffer said, well, if it's 0.75, why are we using the 0.7? We're not just using the 0.7. Now you need to do the same thing on the 0.8 chart. So what are we getting for the 0.8 chart? See, I, I had 0.18 on mine. <coughs> oh, 
I'm going to go with point one, oh one eight. That's fine. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> What's that? Oh, uh, yeah. See, if I have point zero two two point zero one eight, therefore I'm going to use So we're going to use a row value of 0 0.02. What's row times the area of the column? So this is where a straight edge comes in handy. Say it again. 5.6 square inches, is that what you said? How about this? Three bars up top, three bars on the bottom, three number nines. Well, do you have a, you tell me, let me know if you have a better or a solution that has smaller area that has an even number of bars because you're going to want to put the same bar amount of bars up top than you are on the bottom. This is actually a good exercise. so. Okay. Here I'll uh, I'll pull up the the beam charts or the rebar tables. Yes. So this is the one that I picked six number nines. Um, I could go with eight number eights. I could go with ten number sevens. I could go with four number tens. I guess that would work, you know. However, no, it wouldn't. No, it's five point six. Sorry, so that wouldn't work. Um, yeah, I don't think there is a better option. Couldn't help it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions at all? This is really important. Both. The, the, all right, so the element, all right, this was a good question, so let me be clear. So the element is vertical, all right? So imagine that the element is holding up, you know, let's say a building, so it's a vertical element. But then imagine that wind is hitting the building in this fashion. That would be the uh, uh, a beam column, a vertical element that's also getting bent. Now I know our moments were dead and live. That was just to make the load factoring easy. But that's that's a realistic example of what we're talking about. Yes, sir. That'd be a little tough. Yeah, you could. I mean, uh, that's very possible. Um, you could also, it could also be a lot simpler than that. You could just have a column with a load that's offset. You know what I mean? Where, you know, the load is just off center. That's a very typical example of this. But to answer your question, if you had a, a beam with load on it that was just being compressed, that's a way to handle this. This is good stuff. Any questions at all? Yeah, all I want for that's VPN, so 
if you calculate VPN, that's it. That, I know it's a short problem. That's really the purpose of it. Oh, uh, just assume it's tied and not spiral. I mean, it's a square column, so. Is it it's square or rectangular? Is it square? Okay. Either way, it's not circular, so. Anything else at all? So, let's be clear on a couple things. Friday, you turn in homework. I give you the solution. No late assignments. We do exam review. You all ask whatever questions you want. Monday, you come in and take the final. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is reinforced concrete design. So on Friday, um, <laughs> on Friday, we will uh, have our review, have your homework ready. That's all I got. Oh, my goodness. Oh. All right, enough of that, enough of that, enough of that.